Welcome back today. I'm going to take you through a fairly typical problem solving joinery type job where the customer basically says, I've got this problem and you have to come up with a solution that works. I couldn't film much of the on-site installation for this job, but I'll talk you through the whole thing and hopefully it'll make sense. So essentially this customer has a couple of lovely house cats and they have wanted a way of keeping the cats zoned into one section of the house. So essentially they needed dividing doors between their dining room and their kitchen. The current open plan doorway is quite wide and too wide for a single door. This is it viewed from the dining room side and this is it from the kitchen side. Normal hinged doors isn't an option since there's nowhere for the doors to go when they're in an open position. So really sliding doors are the only practical solution here. There's nowhere for the sliding doors to go on the kitchen side since there's units on one side and a wall on the other. So really the doors have to be on the dining room side and they need to slide all the way along the dining room wall when they're in the open position. So to do that, I need to build a lowered section of wall above the doorway to support the rail system. And then it should simply be a case of installing everything. We settled on custom sized prefabricated louvre doors that the customer can paint in any color they want. I'll be using MDF to build the lowered section of wall above the doorway, which I'll also prime ready for the customer to paint. And I'm using the Hercules sliding door gear system. So I've already attached the top brackets on. So these are the, the kind of hanging brackets for the top of the door. And basically the way it works is these sliding door wheels go into here and they get bolted in and then tightened in with that kind of nut there, if you can see that, that nut there tightens up. So you put it in, tighten it up like that, and then you can attach the whole thing into the rail, into the top rail. And you can either do it like that where you slide it in from the actual rollers, or you can put the rollers into the frame and then attach the doors afterwards whatever's easiest for your particular situation. And then the height, you can do fine height adjustment on these just by basically tightening or loosening that part there. So what I'm doing, because the instructions aren't particularly clear, is I'm just gonna set that to, so that that's flush at the top. And that seems to give, that'll give us plenty room to go bring the door down if I need to. And it gives us plenty room to bring the door up. So it'll go like that. That'll go in there. And then the whole thing attaches into the rails. So then these are the actual, this is the rail that goes on. In this case, I'm doing it as a, a wall fitting, which I'll show you all about that in a second. So the wheels slide in like that. And then obviously that'll be upside down. And you can either ceiling mount these or wall mount them. In this situation I'm going to have to wall mount it so that it can overlap. So, and then they just run in there like that. So that's all there is to it. For the wall mounting side of things for this particular type of bracket, what I've got is these little fittings. So they slide on the end like that. And then you just attach two screws in there. And it's simple as that. Literally just two screws per bracket and there's five brackets, which is more than enough. And then once you've got them all in, obviously you just tighten up that bolt on the top and then that stops it kind of flopping about. So I just wanted to show you a problem that I've got at the bottom of the door that I'm gonna have to kind of sort out or overcome. So a very typical kind of joinery, you know, thing where you're gonna have to work it out as you go. I'll show you this quickly. So the bottom guide rails, because obviously at the top, the door can't go anywhere because it's held into the guide rails. But at the bottom, you need something so that it's not just flopping about in the breeze. So there's two ways you can do it on these doors. You can either route a groove all the way down this edge. And normally that would be my preferred way of doing it, which would be to route a groove down there and then basically all you do is you attach this plastic thing into the floor and the door rides in that routed groove. 
and it comes with a whole bunch of these so that you can do that. The only thing is, although the edge of these louver doors are, what, 20, 28 mil, 27 mil or something like that, here we've only got about 18 mil to play with. So I don't really want to be taking a lot of material out of this groove here. I just think it's going to be a bit too thin and I'm going to run into problems. Um, I mean, this bottom section is obviously structural to the door and you've got the, the bottom rail and the middle one and the top that keeps the whole door square. I don't really want to be removing material from such a, a thin strip like that. If it was this thickness all the way along, I would have less concerns about that. But just with this being so thin, I'm not going to chance it. So instead, the other way you can use these brackets is to run effectively one on either side of the door, like, uh, like that. So it'll do it exactly the same job, but it'll just, instead of running down a groove in the middle, we'll have them on the outsides like that. And the way that these actually work is that they come with this little snap, kind of like a snap toggle type thing that goes on there and then you snap that off at whatever width you want. Now, that would be great, but obviously we've now got the problem that we've, because the door's thinner here, the door's constantly gonna get jammed as this bit of wood hits against there, which is gonna be a bit of a pain in the backside for the customer. So I don't particularly want them to be living with a problem like that because apart from anything else, it'll ultimately result in this probably getting snapped off at some point because all it takes is for them to kind of slide the doors open quickly and for this to catch on the edge of that and it'll it'll break it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make some strips to go along this bottom edge both sides so there'll be a strip there and a strip there and i'm just going to glue those and brad nail them on and that will be sanded and obviously these will be cut to be the same with this out, it's just I've got the plastic on at the minute. Another tip, by the way, leave the plastic on as long as you can possibly bear it, just to protect the door. Although this is gonna be getting painted white, so I'm not too concerned. But just by doing it this way, it'll now mean that I've got an equal thickness of door all the way along for it to run in these kind of runner things on the floor. So I think that should work quite nicely so I'm gonna attach those on let them glue and then that's pretty much the door all ready for fitting so the only other thing that I need to consider before fitting these doors is obviously I need to build the wall section that's going to come down which is going to give the attachment point for the top rail to go on to so that wall section I need to know how big to make it so I'm going to base that on an overlap of I think we're going to go for about a 30 centimeter overlap so I'm just going to put a little mark on the door 30 centimeter, 30 mil, three centimeter. Losing my mind. Essentially, let me sh try and show you with a bit of MDF. So basically there's gonna be wall coming down, except it'll be obviously behind the door. So there'll be wall coming down like that. And I want there to be a bit of an overlap, just so there's, there's not a huge gaping gap at the top of the door, kind of here-ish. So, as I say, three centimetre overlap I'm going to have. So I don't want it like that, because technically there's no reason why I couldn't have it like that. But then you'll have this big gap here, do you know what I mean? I don't think that'll look very good, so I'm going to have this little overlap here. So all I need to do is measure from the bottom of the door to that mark. So that is one, nine, five, two. So I'm going to make a note of that measurement. And then I also need to allow 5mm at the bottom clearance. 
So plus 5, which makes it 1957. So therefore, I need to measure at the property from the floor to 1957, and that's where the wall's going to end. And then there'll be wall coming up from there to the ceiling. So I've measured up from floor level and this is the mark on the wall for the 1957 millimetres. I'm using 12mm MDF for the finished surface so I've marked the exact thickness and the shaded area shows the size of the framework that I need to build. The framework needs to be a precise thickness so you don't see any transition between the plastered wall and the MDF once it's all installed. I've ripped this to size on the table saw in the workshop installed the framework and then installed the MDF panels using bevel cuts on all of the lower edges. The main reason for that so that I don't have to deal with any MDF edge grain. As per usual, whenever I cut bevels on MDF, I managed to cut myself on them at some point. So this was all brad nailed and glued in place and then all of the nail holes and transitions between the MDF and original wall were filled with two part filler before sanding everything smooth and flush. I then did a test install of the rail and discovered that the door was hitting the beading running at skirting board level on the floor. So I had to make some additional standoffs for the brackets to hold the runner slightly further away from the wall. I just made these from 18mm plywood. I then primed it, ready for the customer to paint and fitted a latch handle to stop the cat from pawing the doors open. And that was it pretty much done. The customer wasn't sure whether they wanted the two doors permanently held together, so I fitted a dowel peg between the two doors to keep them securely aligned while they're in the closed position. I also had to fit two of the plastic guide brackets to the floor on the left-hand side, one to keep the doors in line when they're fully open, and one to keep them from swinging around when they're fully closed. The customer's gonna be doing all of the final decorating, and once these are painted to match the wall, they should look pretty funky. They slide open and closed really easily, and they can be locked in the closed position using the latch handle that are installed. You can't see the transition between the wall and the MDF at all. Happy customer and above all, happy cats. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and tick that little subscribe bell as well so you get notified of new videos when they come out. I'll probably be doing a job pricing video of this one over on my Patreon at some point, so don't forget to follow me on there as well. For now, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.